Cheers. Good. First cup of coffee of the day. Welcome to the latest installment. Nope, I want to start with good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Today I want to show you guys how to brew a perfect cup of coffee, a pot of coffee, coffee, anything. We need coffee. <laughs> we don't have electricity and I don't know where to plug this in. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare a wonderful cup of coffee without the aid of electricity. We would like to thank everyone who has subscribed to our channel and please if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. We would really appreciate it very much. Thank you. French press, small espresso maker, percolator, which can also double to make cowboy coffee, and a large espresso maker. So that's all you need. Any one of these, water, fire, heat source, oh yeah, and coffee. All right, let me show you the one that I'm most familiar with. That's the small espresso maker. You start with one cup of water. Let's put in a scoop of coffee. Put the lid on. Let's get the flame going. Oh yay. Yes. Put the cup underneath before it starts to percolate. Besides from it leaking a little bit where the seal is on the lid, I actually did get a reasonable cup of coffee out of it. Not bad. Maybe five minutes. This is what the grounds look like. Oh, that's warm. A pair of leather gloves are a great idea for doing this type of brewing. That's what you end up with in the coffee. I like it. It's been a long time since I used it, so that seal's no good. And then when I went to clean it, I actually broke it. It's kind of a bummer to get another one. This was number two in line, also an espresso maker by Letty Italiano. Looks like it's well constructed and doesn't have the piece on top that'll break off as easily. That's one cup of water. Put the Folgers coffee in. One scoop. That looks like about its capacity. See that? I like this very much. I'll tell you why. No more do you need a metal cup to catch the coffee as it's brewing. As I was putting it on the fire, I said, how, how do you know? Well, you know that the coffee's ready because it'll go into the top of the unit and once the coffee is filled, that's it. Yeah, this is all right. No need for the gloves either. Handles cool to the touch. Don't see any grounds. Darn near full. Let's see. That's about it. Yeah, that's excellent. And in comparison to the small one, this seemed to go much quicker. Maybe heavier gauge construction. That didn't take long at all. Mmm. Oh, second cup of the day. Beautiful. Woo! Hot, too. I like it. We are on to the French press. And after unboxing it and reading the instructions a couple of times, I thought, it's really not for me. It's glass, first of all. Secondly, 
it comes apart really easily and it just requires a lot more patience let's see how the coffee tastes let's let's give it a fair shake the other thing I didn't like about it is you have to transfer your hot water to another container so it's not quite as convenient anyway again let's see what happens first thing you have to do gently take the plunger out add hot water to preheat the unit then they said to let that sit for one minute preheating Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Oh, one minute to preheat. Twenty more seconds. <laughs> I've, I've tried to be nice. This, this is definitely not for me. But we'll try it. It'll work. Plus, one plus, it holds two cups. Where the other two items that we've tried, the espresso makers, only one cup. Okay, there's a minute of preheating. Now you have to transfer it back into your container. Bring your temperature back up. Add your desired amount of coffee. In our case, it'll be two scoops because it's two cups, so that goes directly in here, I think. The water's back up to temperature. Pour your water in. Maybe do a little bit of a pour over, get all your grounds wet. Bring it up to one inch from the top, it says maximum. Then you have to put the top on to seal it. Okay, place the lid over the beaker, the filter fully raised, let it brew for three to five minutes. The five minutes are up. As you saw, I put the coffee press down slowly, not to disturb the grounds. Still good and hot. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, looks clean. No grounds. The plus side on this one is you've got two cups of coffee brewed. Where the others thus far has just been one. A little smoother. It, it looks about as dark as the others, but it doesn't seem to have the, the bite. That, that is a distinct difference in taste for sure. Smooth. Real smooth. This is good. It's not my thing, but I'm sure for someone who has a little bit different taste in coffee that, that this would be probably a lot more acceptable than the other two espresso makers. Yeah, this doesn't have any bite at all. Wow, that's really good. We are going for percolated coffee. And as you can tell by the size of the container, certainly fill a, a larger crowd. Six cups to be exact. I've already had enough coffee. <laughs> it's starting to get jittery. So I'm using three cups instead of the six max. We'll put in three cups of water. Okay. Three scoops of coffee. There. Let's try to get this kind of even. Put the stem in, the basket in, the top on, close it, get it on the fire. I guess that's it for the percolating. Assuming it's done. I've never percolated coffee before, but I don't want to overboil it. It'd be kind of bad if you scorched it. Once the uh, clear top doesn't look like anything's happening, I think we're done. We'll let that sit for a little bit. We'll give it a taste, see how it is. I need a break from all this coffee. Let that sit about five minutes. Boy, that pot is hot, hot to the touch, but the uh, the handle is not. We'll pour a little cup and see how it looks. 
Oh, that's not bad. Look at that. I don't see any grounds in it. Very reasonable color. That's okay. It's hot. It's good. That has a taste distinct to its own. It's not like the uh, espresso maker. It's not like the French press. It it has a its own own flavor. It's hard to describe. A lot more aromatic, and probably halfway in between the French press and the espresso, as far as bitterness and and uh, robust. You know, it's it's the roast. It it. That's what it tastes like and smells like. I'm going to give you guys a little shot of what I see behind the camera. In case I have to hightail it out of here because of the weather, I wanted you guys to see what I'm looking at. Now for the much anticipated cowboy coffee. We're going to be making half a bat, so we'll put three cups of water in and then we'll bring that uh, water up to a warm temperature. Bring the water up almost to boil. Then we're going to add our coffee right directly to the water with three cups. So we're going to put three scoops in. Now we need to bring this to a rapid boil. Once we've achieved a rapid boil, we'll let that go for two or three minutes. Turn the heat off. You're supposed to pour cool water on top of it. And that'll make the ground sink. Not too much. You don't want to dilute the coffee too much. You're supposed to let that sit for a couple of minutes. Weather's coming in as they had predicted, forecasted, and we're trying to pack everything up. But we definitely wanted to finish this last portion of the video, making the cowboy coffee. Well, a whole afternoon of drinking coffee, I am wide awake. Let's see how the cowboy coffee turned out. First attempt, let's see. Oh my goodness, it worked. Whoa, a little windy. I don't see any, any grounds. Color looks good. Temperature's okay, even though I put the cold water in there to get the grounds down. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's okay too. Definitely different. All, all, all of these have been different. The espresso, the press, the percolator, and now the cowboy coffee. All have definitely different flavors. Oh, that's good. It's real good. Thanks again for subscribing to our channel. And uh, Lord's blessings to everyone out there. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> it's going to rain.